Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we were going to see how we can mount an EBS volume in uh, Linux EC2 instances. In the previous video, we have seen how we can do it with Windows EC2 instances, right? So this time we will be using a Linux instance, right? So let us see what we are going to see in this video. In the last videos, uh, we have seen uh, to launch EC2 instances as well. Then we also learned how we can create and attach an EBS volume. In this video, we are again going to attach a volume to our EC2 instance. After that, we will be mounting that volume through various Linux commands. And then we will be creating a file and just seeing that, yes, we will be able to use that newly created EBS volume. So let us switch ourselves to our AWS Management Console. So here I am logged into my AWS Management Console and I will be going to EC2 right now because I have already created a Linux instance into my account, right? So in North Virginia, I already have a running instance that is a Linux instance, right? So uh, quickly going to instances, right? And you can see that right now there is my Linux instance running, right? In availability zone US East 1A, right? And I have also created a new EBS volume that is my Linux volume in the same availability zone because EBS can be attached to an instance only if the instance is in the same availability zone. So you have to, you know, make sure that the AZs are the same, right? So you can see that the in use volume is our root volume by the name of my Linux uh, instance because it is by default as, uh, attached to it and it is of 8 gigs and I have created a new volume called Linux volume which is of 30 gigs and which is right now available but yet not attached to my instance. So what I'm going to do over here is I will be actually attaching this volume to my instance. So going on attach volume then you will be finding my instance that is in running state. No need to stop your instance you can do it at at a runtime also and just simply attach the volume. So you can see that the available status is now changed in use. So if you refresh it, you can see that the volume is now been attached to the EC2 instance. You have to logged into your EC2 instance. So for that, I will be opening up my PowerShell. So going to the start button and typing Windows PowerShell. Select the instance, right? Go to connect SSH client and copy the command to SSH into the EC2 instance, right? So go to CD OneDrive desktop and the command. And now I will be SSH into my EC2 instance. Yes. And logged in. So now I am in my EC2 instance, right? So what we are now going to visualize is whether we are going to actually see our two volumes that are attached to our EC2 instance. So for that, I will be, you know, running a command that is lsblk. What this command is going to do, it's going to list all the block storage that is associated with our EC2 instance. So you can see that over here, I have one root volume that is of eight gigs and that have a mount point, right? And this is the volume that we have attached. That is the 30 gigs of volume, but it does not have any mount point, right? So it do not have any mount point. That is why we cannot use it directly. So what we need to do is, we will be having to actually create a mount point for it so that we can actually use it directly, right? So the next step that we are going to do over here is, first of all, switching ourselves to the super user mode because all such permission is granted to the root user. So sudo su and now you can see that we have now become the 
uh, you know super user right so uh, what the next step that we are going to do is we need to uh, check whether there is a file system attached to this particular uh, you know um, device or not so in order to mount we need to make sure that there is a file system attached to it right so what i will be doing i will be just typing a command that will be file minus s and the device name that is dev xvdf now xvdf is coming from this side this is xvdf right and enter and you can see that over here i got the output as data now whenever if you actually run this command and you get written over here data that means that there is no file system attached to it that means we need to create a file system that means we have to install a file system so that we can create a mount point right so the next step will be to create a file system or you can say is to install a file system right so what i will be going to do is install a file system so the command will be sudo mkfs that is make file right so you can uh, actually visualize the command that uh, like that and i am making ext4 you can also go for ext3 and then we have to give our device name so dev xv df and enter and now you can see that these steps says that yes the file is now been actually created so now if i run again the command this one you can see that there so you so if i run this command again so you can see that there is a difference in the output last time we got data but this time we get that yes that ext4 file system the extended 4 file system has been now created right so that we actually now created our file the next step is to create a directory right to mount the volume using make dir command so now after creating the file system the next step will be to create a directory so let me just clear my screen so that everything should be visible so what i will be doing over now here is i will be making a directory so sudo mkdir and the name of the directory that will be the mount point let say my file mount right so that will be my mount directory so that is just a name you can give any name that you want and enter no error that means that the directory has been now created successfully now the next step because now we have made the file system now we have made the directory the next step will be to mount the ebs volume using mount command so the next step will be sudo mount and uh, we have to give the device name that is dev xvdf it is df right and then we need to give the name of the directory so that will be my file mount right so this is the command with which we are going to mount the ebs volume right and enter no error that means the file the the volume has been mounted successfully now we need to check whether it has you know uh, mounted successfully or not so just do the same command that is lsblk and this time you can see that here for xvdf we have a mount point of over now so that is very clear that now we have a mount point created so let us just try one thing and do cd my mount file and enter so now i am in to that particular uh, ebs volume and uh, here i will be just creating a file so i will be doing vim that is opening just opening a vi editor and by the name my file and enter right so this is now i am into the editor which is the vi editor and to write something i have to press i on my keyboard and you can see that here is i am in the 
insert mode so vi editor actually have two modes one is for writing that is the insert mode and one is the command mode uh, and from uh, each mode we can switch uh, you know from one mode to another in order to write something i have to be into ins insert mode so i will be pressing i on my keyboard and for saving and for other commands i will be pressing escape and i will be into the command mode and at that point of time i can enter the commands right so right now i am in the insert mode so i will be writing something this is a file in new ebs volume right and now i will be switching actually saving it so i have to give the command to save so i will be switching into the command mode and i will be just pressing the escape key and you can see that this insert will vanish by pressing escape and here i can write the commands so colon wq is the command in the vi editor to save the file right the so colon wq and enter right so you can see that it says that a new line is written actually right so uh, what we can do if we can actually just do ls so you can see that we have a file that is my file written over here so if we actually do cat to uh, my file and enter and you can see that this is a new file in the abs volume so you can see that it is actually win uh, you know practically uh, uh, that is how we have actually written something into our new file right so if i do it like uh, what is the command of actually uh, ls minus l i think yes so if you can see now uh, this is the new file that we have actually written in our new ebs volume so uh, that was all about how we can actually mount to our uh, you know ebs volumes and we can also partition our ebs volumes and we can also we can do a lot of things so for that coming back to our uh, ebs volume tab here i will be creating another volume and this time i will be again keeping the volume uh, as 30 gb in the same ec2 instance uh, az the name i shall be given this time will be linux volume 2 and create so now i have created another volume of 30 gigs and uh, this is my volume and i will be attaching this volume to my running ec2 instance again right here and i shall be actually attaching it right so on refreshing you can see that the volume is now been attached to my ec2 instance again now as i am again in my ec2 user so let me just exit this super user mode once i will be going into it again and if i do lsblk right so you can see that this time i have one more disk that is of uh, about uh, you know 30 gigs almost which, which which we have taken over here is attached to my ec2 instance right so here what i want is i want to partition my uh, drive right just like this that the root one is actually been partitioned right so i just want to make create partitions over here so for that i have to switch myself to super user and then i will be running a command that is sudo f disk and i have to give the device name so that will be dev slash xv dg this time right so that is xv dg and that name came from here because i want to partition this one so pressing enter right so here uh i am actually in you know f disk mode right now right so here what we will be going to do is we will be partitioning our disk and it says type m so that you can get all the commands listed over here so here there are certain uh, you know alphabets which is actually used to uh, do the partitioning right so i used m which is used to print the menu 
and next I will be using n which is adding a new partition. So, n stands for new. So, new partitioning. So, the next command that I will be typing over here will be n for creating a new partition. Here it is add a new partition. So, I will be doing n right. Now, it will be asking partitioning type. So, there are two types of partition one is the primary and the second one is extended. But here it is a trivial video. So, I won't be getting into that what is a primary partition and what is an extended partition. I will be going for the default value that is the primary partition. Now, it says how many primary partitions that you want. It is uh, you know it ranges from 1 to 4 and the default value is 1. This is again just an introductory video. So, I will be going for 1 and I will be going for the default value which is for, uh, 2048. So, here it will be asking the range of the sector that from which sector to which sector you want the partitioning. So, default, default range is the complete uh, you know memory size available. So, that is the first sector default value I have taken. Then because I am going for only one partitioning so all the 29 gigs will be together. So, that will be 6081. 7407 right. So, that is the default value of a single partition. So, first sector and the last sector I have defined over here and that has been now done. So, you can see that created a new partition that is partition 1 of Linux and of size of 29. So, because I have just partitioned into one uh, you know size you can also partition into from 1 to 4 right. So, you have to specify different uh, you know uh, ranges of the first sector and the last sector. So, this has asked only once because I have gone for only one partition otherwise it will be asking you in uh, you know in succession. So, uh, the thing that uh, we are going to do is to create a new partition. So, uh, after uh, actually doing it I will be just saving it. So, typing w and here the partition table is now been altered right. So, if now I will be running lsblk command and enter then you can see that a new partition is now been actually created right. So, that was the step with which we can actually uh, you know partition our disk and see. So, uh, we have seen how we can mount the files and how we can uh, you know volumes and how we can create a partition right. So, that was all in this video I hope you understand it. And uh, stay tuned to my channel for more informative videos on AWS. Thank you.